in the mid 90s. The hottest comic book on the planet was Spawn, published by Image Comics and created, of course, by the one and only Todd McFarlane, aka the Todd Father. One of the biggest names in the comic book industry. So he's famous? Heck yeah. Now, when you have the hottest property in comics that is hugely popular with the kids and adults alike, you know what happens. I, I don't know what happened. And that's when Hollywood comes a knocking in the form of New Line Cinema, looking to cash in on that success. And so I give to you. This fast-paced superhero action flick that comes in at a very tight 96 minutes that debuted in cinemas on the 1st of August 1997. Now look, to give you an idea of what it was kind of up against at the cinema, here's just a couple of other superhero movies you kind of might remember that came out in the same year. Those were dark times. Shameful times. Yep, as you can see, she was a real dark time the first superhero movies yeah, back in the 90s. Welcome to the 90s. It was directed by Mark A.Z. Depar, who, which this was his directorial debut, as he originally was a visual effects artist for most of his career. And let's say, due to the poor results of said film, that pretty much was his first and his last big budget directing gig. I'll see Tootie never works again in this town. The film script was written by Alan B. McElroy, who uh, had a pretty good knowledge of the character as he had actually written for the Spawn comic books back in the day and also wrote many of the episodes for the Spawn animated series. And this story is very much, a, how can I say, a very much a run of the mill origin story, which I felt told you really everything you need to know about the Spawn character and his motivations. Sounds like you've got everything covered. It was very clearly written with the intention of having a sequel to kind of get audiences familiar with the character and the settings and tell more of maybe some, a more compelling story arc in the next movie. But let's face it, as we all know, eh, that didn't happen. No sequel for you. Now look, don't get me wrong, the story does have some plot holes and it is a little clunky in its telling. But to me, it felt more like this was more of the director's fault than it actually was the writer's fault as there seems to be more of a focus on the special effects shots to the detriment of the storytelling. And Michael Joy White pretty much said as much in an interview where he said, this first cut had something like 71 special effects in it, and then the story was absolutely intact. And then there was so much editing and so much change, so many changes, that the director, who was a special effects guy, yeah, I believe by the end of it, there were like 414 special effects shots, and he was excited about doing special effects shots, and the story elements just suffered. Well, that explains it. And after you see that interview, you really start to see it in the movie with some really unnecessary special effects that have just been thrown in just for the sake of it. And there is the reason I think you'll find that this movie failed to connect with audiences as people who don't really know the character from the comic book really just didn't understand the movie because of the edits to the story for the sake of special effects. So now he's been completely seduced by CGI. And look, that's probably why I'm only gonna give this, well, at best, a 12 out of 30 for that. Oh, oh, do you know how hard I've been working on this? I'll tell you what, the look of Spawn was a standout in this movie as this was probably one of the most comic book accurate superhero costumes we have seen on camera at that time in the 90s. Not like, say, some of the others. That suit's dog shit. Get a new suit. As we have mentioned, the CGI special effects were probably as good as they could have been for that time in the early, um, mid 90s. But the practical effects, like the makeup and the costumes, they were actually pretty outstanding and look fantastic, like still to this day. Now, the movie was pretty close 
of an adaption as you could get to the comic source material with probably two little differences. You really think I wouldn't notice? The first being Terry Fitzgerald, Al Simmons' best friend before his death, is a black man in the comics, but it was changed to a white man for the movie as it was explained in an article on scottmanning.com. This change was made by the studio to avoid having too many black leads, as they believed that this would give the false impression that the film's target audience was the African American demographic. And the other change to the movie was in the comics that Al Simmons' murderer was Chapel, a character created by Rob Liefeld from the comics Young Blood, instead of Jessica Priest, a character created specifically for the film, who took Chapel's place in the movie. This was to do with some licensing issues between Rob and Todd, which ultimately led to Chapel's removal from the movie but also later was retconned in the comics as well. The cast all round was pretty solid, especially for a 90s movie, with the titular character Spawn being played by Michael Jai White. Doesn't he own a shirt? Who did a great job, especially under all of that makeup for pretty much most of the movie. And speaking of a great job, John Leguizamo as the clown was he was a stain seller, really, for most of the movie. He really balancing out that seriousness of Spawn with his real slapstick comedy. Though... Hold up. Wait a minute. He, look, he did overdo it from time to time, though, uh, in some spots. Like, for example, the cheerleading dance routine was... How can I put it? So not needed. Oh, I didn't need to say that. And of course, let's not forget about Martin Sheen as CIA director Jason Wynn. He was okay and did a good enough job for the movie, but he really leaned hard into that real mustache twirling villain, which camped it up a bit and he was a little cheesy at times. Yes, that's cheesy, but... An all round good job on the look and the feel of the movie, and that's probably why I'm gonna give it a six. 20. Look, I love this case. Uh, this is probably one of the uh, very early releases when it came out. Uh, and I do like the cover a lot. Very mysteriously evil looking. Uh, not about showing too much there, but just enough to get you interested. Whereas, say I was on the Blu-ray cover, you have Spawn in all of his glory, but just a very plain straight up shot nothing too dynamic or interesting looking um look the spine's okay i don't uh, it's not too bad you can kind of see it on your shelf and for the back it's pretty ordinary i don't know what these what the go is with this like these star things it looks pretty average if you ask me it, it is a pretty weak back cover considering how kind of cool the front cover is yeah man is that cool it's very cool and the disc is nothing special. It's pretty much just a very poor copy of the front cover. But anyway, all in all, I would probably give this maybe a 5 out of 10. Damn. So look, there are some extras on this uh, with your pretty much standard fare for 90s movies with the making of The Spawn, interviews with the cast, Todd McFarlane, chapter and verse audio commentary, image gallery, two music videos, and two trailers. Now, is there anything here of value? Hmm, not really. The making of is your standard promotional piece as it uh, gets with some of the, like just the talking heads and then you have some of the interviews which is just the cut pieces from the making of anyway, but just separate. So it's really a double up of the content. I love repetition. Honestly, the image gallery is like three or four small drawings. So really nothing there. But the interview with Todd McFarlane is him complaining about the rating system most of the time and that his spawn is cool and relatable and Batman isn't and he is hokey. Hmm. Uh, uh, let's see. A super secret special forces operative that gets killed and resurrected by the devil then changes his mind and then fights the hordes of hell or a rich guy who fights low-level street crime. Well, that's an easy one. Yes, yeah, sorry, but I will have to disagree with you there, Todd. I think I probably could relate to Batman 
just a little more than spawn. <laughs> That's just crazy talk. So yes, look, it has features, but are they special? Hmm. No. <laughs> That's why I'm giving it a three. Out of three. This freak stuff's gonna come in handy when I get my hands on wet. As I bring up the Rotten Tomatoes scorecard, as you can see, the critics, who it came in at 18%, but at least the audience came in at 36%. So ugh, a very terrible score from the critics, which is really understandable, but it does get a better end of the stick with the audience. I think it's because, let's face it, the comic book fans here who know the source material better, I'd say, um, say more so than your first time view of the character with the story which i think that really reflects in the difference of scores like first time viewers giving it a low score where someone who kind of knows the backstory gets a bit more of it and gives it that that higher score so look if we ran it all out that's going to give us a score of three out of ten you sent me to hell Jason. i'm here to return the favor now look for me god oh god i don't think i've seen this movie since it came out almost like 25 years ago i mean i do remember watching it at the movies and i think i might have watched it when i first bought it on dvd years and years and years ago that's old school so it felt like it was i was almost getting to watch it again for the first time with fresh eyes as i'd really forgotten most of what happened in this movie and Look, I didn't mind it at all, actually. The movie moved along at a good pace with um, no real slow parts to, as such. Um, it all just sort of consistently moves the story forward, which is to its credit, but it does skip some things that may have helped people who, like I said, aren't familiar with the backstory and the characters kind of get a grasp of the story, shall we say. You are not the world's greatest storyteller. And of course, that brings us back to the special effects and the director, which both seem to be the reason why this movie ultimately didn't hit with audiences, as the movie was probably... Look, at I kind of think the movie was ahead of its time in the sense that uh, it was going to be a very special, uh, very heavy special effects movie. And the special effects at the time, let's face it, were really not up to scratch. These special effects suck. Whereas now, there's a lot of talk about a reboot of the movie. And with the special effects at where they are now, it's kind of where they need to be to tell this story properly. Uh, fingers crossed. Anyway, I enjoyed watching it again. And look, I didn't mind it, but I would have loved to see the version that they've talked about where there's less of that bad CGI and more of the story elements put in. Uh, who knows, maybe one day they'll release that version. Anyway, there was some good and there was some bad, but still enjoyable enough to watch. So look, I'm gonna give it a 20 out of 20. I don't mind being short, fat, and ugly, but the pay sucks. Okay, as you can see, I've got some new graphs this time. I'm gonna try something new. So first up is collectability, and I'm gonna give this a two out of five, as it's not that super collectible and it's not hard to find, which kind of leads me into the availability, which is a one out of five. You, It is so common, you can find, there's a thousand copies on eBay right now if you want one, so not hard to find at all. But if you are gonna buy one, your average price is somewhere between the eight to $28 mark for DVD, and around the 16 to 32 dollar mark for blu-ray but of course they still haven't released anything on 4k hd as of this video now for the final score we get a grand total of 51 out of 100 so very much middle of the range like i said before there is some good yeah, there is some bad worth checking out though but keep your expectations low and that way i don't think you'll be disappointed but this was the 90s okay not great so average hey hey so if you like this video and you want to see some more of my reviews click that one there or maybe you want to see what i've got in my collection updates got you covered too why don't you click that one there and of course don't forget to do the most important thing throw me a bat like and please hit that subscription button on the way out thanks again for watching and i'll see you next time